Hey guys, it's Sally Canterbury. We're here at 50 Egg Music talking with two hit songwriters and even better guys. You want to introduce yourself? I'm Shane Miner. I write <laughs> with Jonathan at 50 Egg and, and for Tally in awesome. 50 Egg. I'm Jonathan Singleton. Uh, I write at 50 Egg too, Spirit Music. Mm. Co owner of 50 Egg, me and Tally and yeah. Luke, Luke Combs. Very cool, guys. Um, okay, so tell us a little bit about how you got started. We'll start with you, Jonathan. You're doing great, by the way, Tally. Thanks, thanks, bud. Um, we just started, though. She just started. Let's go. Went to, I know, yeah. Let's go. She went the Come on. <laughs> nope. Let's see. I was playing in bars in Jackson, Tennessee. Um, didn't know people wrote songs for a living. I ran into a guy named Ted Jones who had a deal over at Murrah Music. And I started coming to town with him, singing demos, writing songs, putting stuff together. Let's see, we would uh, we cut about 12 songs on a thing called the Jim Bay Sessions with me and Ilya Tashinsky and uh, Nick Buddha. And that kind of got me going in songwriting. I learned from those guys what that meant. I was, uh, I guess they started kind of talking to me about doing artist stuff so I got better co-writes than I usually would. I, I didn't really do the, right. the top to bottom, the bottom to top kind of thing. I was in there with some pretty good guys early on and, um, and, and fell in love with it. I loved it. Jane? Mm. I started writing songs probably when I was about 12 years old. I wrote my first song. I don't even remember what it was. But what I used to like to do is take the songs that I loved so much growing up, like and I used to try to write my own lyrics to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just oh, to try yeah. to keep up the, the, the oh, words yeah. that influence you. And then, so I grew up singing. We'd sneak off to little parties, sneak in some honky tonks every now and then and play. And uh, fast forward, one day I was in Los Angeles and um, I met a guy by the name of Bud Prager, um, who's a, who was a big rock manager. And he introduced me to a guy by the name of Dan Huff. And of course, John and I worked, yeah. worked with Dan. And um, he, Dan inter, inter, eventually introduced me to another guy, and you know, it's all, always that step of getting mm -hmm. to Nashville. Yeah. And so uh, a guy named James Stroud at the time. And so I just kept writing, started, came to Nashville, started co-writing like John, because John probably grew up writing by himself until sure. you, you co-write, right? Yeah, yeah, or me That's, and my brother, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right, same thing. So, and started co-writing and, and met, the, met the right people, got in the right room, started learning. Um, and here I am. Let me start so again. was Dan doing, was he, he wasn't doing country production. He was not doing country production he at was, the time. Uh, he started, he was a session player, guitar session player, player right. out there, and a great guitar player. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't know Dan's backstory either. Right. No. He played in a lot of big records. Right. Big record. Right. Thriller. Thriller. Absolutely. Yeah. Thriller. And he was in that rock group with Giant. Sure. Giant. Yeah. yeah he was a lead singer. Yeah. Well, this is a good transition. So you've mentioned Ted Jones, you mentioned Dan Huff, and you also mentioned James Stroud. Name a couple more people that just kind of in, were influential in your career in the beginning and how important mentors are oh, man. in getting started. Uh, I met Catherine Blassigame through Ted and those guys mm -hmm. and kind of making the trips around the publishing companies. Uh, and I met her. She was working for Dan at the time. I think at that time it was called Diver Dan Music, yep. which eventually switched over to Crosstown Music, which eventually became BMG, as Nashville goes. Right. You know, the merger, <laughs> merger on Music Row. Right? And... Uh, uh, anyway, uh, Catherine was my first, uh, like point person, which is kind of how I always work and kind of how we work here where you've got a point person. That person is, is in charge of your schedule. They set you up with this person and, and those people are supposed to be good at in the publishing world are supposed to be good at, well, I think you would get along with this person, even though y'all are different in that way. And speaking of people who were different, uh, me and Jim Beavers had a lot of success back then, yeah. and Catherine was the first one that set us up. Me right. and Derek Rattan had a lot of success, and still do. Uh, and Catherine was the first one to set us up. Oh, man. Uh, Daryl Brown, you know, uh, back in those days, I was we were mostly writing for my artist thing that was yeah. happening at the right. time. So I kind of sneak these things in, and, and Joe Fisher was a big uh, help in all of that stuff. And if my label would pass on a song, I would I, we'd just call Joe Fisher and go, hey, man, we think we got something here. And he'd, he'd pitch it to uh, people over at Universal. He was head A&R at Universal at that time. 
Uh, and I'm sure there's a, a bunch more I'm missing. Jesse Alexander. I mean, all those guys that my initial first point person, Catherine, and who's Eric Church's wife, by the way, and then we toured with them. And we just, like, learned so much in that process right. from those people. That's how you do it. That, right. There's no doubt about it. You get in these rooms where they're right in circles around you, and you learn something every day. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. How about you? Any other people that were super influential? Um, in yeah, I would say... Um, when I signed at EMI, that was my first publishing deal with EMI, Gary Overton, who ended up, you know, being the record label head at Sony, but I was with Gary for 13 years. He was the one that would really walk in. He was a good song guy. He would walk in and I would play him songs and he would, he would critique the songs. And, you know, as a new writer or a new guy coming to town, you're like, wait, that's my song. I mean, I, I like that, right? right, right, right. Who, are you like that who are you to critique that? Who are you to critique that? Who are you? Right? And then you started looking at the track record and you're like, okay. Yeah. So I think that was a big thing. So I started, you know, I learned to take criticism and constructive criticism young and, and learned to edit myself mm -hmm. and um, him. And then he threw me right to the wolves. I mean, Dean Dillon, big writer. It was one of my first co-writes. I was scared to death. I mean, Dean Dillon, how many George Strait hits did mm -hmm. he had? You know, he's an icon, oh, yeah. Hall of Famer. And, um, a bunch of guys. I mean, I, they threw me. I had so many directions where I went. I wrote with uh, George McCorkle, Marshall Tucker band. I was writing with those guys, and I'm like this new kid that came to town, mm -hmm. you know. And it was it was yeah. fun. It was a blast. And so I, I really learned to cut my teeth and get advice from those guys. And they all had one thing in common was tenacity. Yeah. Just writing and, and staying with it and being able to edit yourself. And for sure. But those guys were all influential. I mean, there's so many names like I, mean, I could name, you know. But God, if I'm scared to start naming, them, you forget right. people, you know. Yeah. And John and I started writing way back. We did. That's right. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah, 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 way back. Yeah, we our hair was still it like was mine was still a different color. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, not as gray. Not as gray. <laughs> mine, <laughs> mine definitely not. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Well, y'all. Yeah. So y'all are talking about early on in your career. You know, if you had to give some advice to up and coming songwriters and artists, what would those pieces of advice be? Music business. Go, go ahead. Advice. Go ahead. Um, man, I'm, I'm thinking back to all the questions I asked. I, like I just said, I believe tenacity. I believe being able to look at the songs that you write and being able to criticize yourself and take that and take and have somebody, I mean, you have to do it. You sit in the office and you, you hear songs from new guys all day mm -hmm. long. And sometimes it's hard to go, I really like this, but there's this part I don't get, or there's this part, right? Right. And I know that's tough for you to do, mm -hmm. but you got to do it. And I think, I think, yeah. I think, as a writer, you come here and you got to be able to take criticism. You got to hang in there. Tenacity is the game. Right. I think, you know, learn to explore with melodies. Learn to say say the same thing in a different way, yeah. and and just never quit. Just keep plugging and keep plugging and keep going. For and, sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you used to hear hear a lot that. Uh, once you're here, you don't hear it that much anymore, but like What's that? Get, get used to no, you know. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. Like no is our daily, like the normal thing that's happening. Yeah. No Absolutely. is like, it doesn't even. Yes, you, it's you're a pleasant way, surprise, right? Yeah, you're yes. way past used to yeah. it by the time you're you're writing songs with those guys. And, and uh, kind of desensitizes you a little yeah. bit, right? You yeah, get yeah tough. you kind of expect no. A callous, yeah, they'll find yeah, a reason right, to not right, like this. Right. And also in songwriting, too, speaking of don't give them a reason, so don't give anybody a reason to, to not like it. Because we're talking about country radio. We're still talking about yep. if we're streaming or if we're, right. or whatever we're doing, we're still talking about getting those songs. Here's the artist that we have to write songs for. If you're talking about professional songwriting, right. here's the artist we have to write songs for. So let's write songs for those artists. Not to say you can't write creative songs, but you can sure. play those in your bedroom too. Creative is the wrong word. You see what I'm trying to say? Uh, yeah. They're all creative. It's it, it, you're writing songs for them. You're not writing songs for yourself anymore. Right. You can do a little side project and do mm -hmm. the songs you want to do. That's we right. all kind of do those things. So get it out of your system. Yeah, but you got to get right. good at that. Are yeah. my songs as good as the ones that are playing? Whether or not I like those songs or not, That's are they right. as good as those songs that I'm hearing, that I'm hearing. playing on, on, on the radio sure. that are going right. up the chart? That's right. And it's hard to second guess that artist you're writing for. But if, if the artist is in the room with us. Sure. Which That's another more obstacle. More. Right. It's happening. That's more where you're more. trying to get, That's right. right? That's so right. So what we're doing is our days of what, right. three or four sure. artist rights. Right. And maybe a couple right. of. Right. Uh, that's what you're trying to get to. And when they're sitting in the room, you got a producer. If you got Artist Monday, Artist Tuesday, Artist Wednesday, Artist sure. Thursday, Friday, uh, they're only going to give you three or four chances right. to do that where you don't 
get them something that they like right. a right. little bit, right. right? Right. So then the pressure becomes, you know, that you have to produce in that in that kind of way. Well, I got to remain friends with them, and then I gotta I gotta get them a song, or they right. or they're not gonna call me back anymore. There's plenty of people to call in town, and right. they're all great. That's right. Everybody's great. Right. Right. That's right. Yeah. For sure. So I mean. Just summing up, I think it's thick skin for sure, right? You sure, can't, gotta have You thick can't skin. be precious about your songs, and you can't nope. think that you're going to hear yes all the time. Because you're not. Because you're not at all. Right. No way. And it's also, you know, keep working at it. And I've seen talent. I know he has too. I've seen, and you'll 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 know I'm right. I've seen talented kids come to this town, or talented people, great with great instincts. They can't stand the word no. Oh uh, yeah. And it they they went home. Them. They stopped. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which yeah, is a sad totally. deal. And another thing that both of you do well that I'll point out is you write a great song and the next day you move on. Sure. Because you have sure. to, right? You have to. You can't hold them like babies and right. go, well, what about that song? What about that? And you should to a certain right. degree. Like Every should, song has their time. You should bring them back right, up and right, go, hey, right. what about that thing? And we sure. do that all the time. Yep. We do it to tally all the time. But like, you, you can't hold it as, as you got to move on. Yeah. You, got, you got to keep doing it over and yeah. over. Yeah, you remember over. the days we'd write a song and you're like, God, I know this song's great. Yeah, publishers love it, we love it, and then all of a sudden, like for a year or two, it goes away, and then all of a sudden, it's cut and it's on the radio like eight years after we right. wrote it. Right. Remember those days? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And that yeah. still happens sometimes. It does sometimes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So y'all talked about y'all keep talking about me. So now we're gonna segue into publishing deals. Okay. You know, okay. tell us about your first publishing deal, what that meant to your songwriting. How it took you to the next level, if it took you to the next level, yeah. you changed your songwriting, those things. I think mine did. I think my initial publishing deal and the way that it was set up uh, carried through my whole process of what I think a publishing company ought to, what I think a publishing company ought to do, how I think a writer ought to write and work with a publishing company because uh, it was a small deal. It was me and Neil Thrasher, Busby, and Matthias. Uh, Wolo, who was a Swedish guy, and uh, Melissa Pierce. And then we were the only ones in that publishing company. It was the early Crosstown days. And we were just kicking butt. I mean, we were killing because we were so focused and so small. And uh, there was time for all the writers. Um, uh, Catherine was working that thing early on. Uh, Daryl Franklin was in on that deal later on. And uh, I, I think in my mind, it kind of set me to that's what a publishing company ought to be right it should be small right. it should feel like family it should feel like everybody's pulling for each other and mm -hmm. that's what we try to do at 50 egg all the time it's mm -hmm. like if everybody's not pulling for everybody and you're not a team player then we're in trouble on that mm -hmm. that's because right. that's how it ought to be we're all right. posting about uh each other and, and supporting each other and uh and there's also healthy competition and all that sure too. we do it too we all do it we yeah. just man you know we who wrote the best song today, which sometimes these days wins and sometimes right. it doesn't. But uh, <laughs> you say who wrote the best song with the artist that day. It was like, right, right, you're right, the winner, right, you're yeah. the winner that day. Right. Uh, but no, that I think that deal uh, set in my mind the structure of, of how that should work and it works for me and that the writer should be focusing on writing the best song that they can write that day, period, and that's it. So right. it's not... You know, we tell everybody here, it's like, hey, if, if we need if you need help with something else, let us know because we want you to be focused on that. Like, if we if sure. you want me to come mow your yard, if that's what's keeping you from writing a great song, let me come mow your yard. We'll do that. Whatever it takes to get for the writer to be focused on that because it's a hard enough job on that's its right. own. That's right. right. And you're trying to regiment creativity. It's like, hey, from <clears> 10 <throat> or 11 to three or four or five, whatever, we're going to be creative today. That's how your brain ought to be firing all the time. Oh, yeah. And if you're not doing that, you're, I think you're in big trouble. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Shane, your first pub deal. Um, you talked a little bit about EMI and the yeah. early days. Yeah, the early days. That was so long ago. It was a long time oh. ago. That was when publishing companies started, right? <laughs> that was when... <laughs> they just came up with He's the word publishing. Now. Oh, I don't get mad. <laughs> that no, time. No. Did they call it publishing back then? Yeah, they yeah. Did? That's They still had the, the phones. The, uh, yeah, they wrote with yeah, quills? Yeah, right, right. On quills. Yeah. Script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. No, it was 98. 98. 98. I was alive then, so we're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, yeah, how, what year were you born, Tony? No, 86. <laughs> um, I graduated from high school in 86. Oh, no. Um, Sorry. That's all right. Yeah. The 80s were great. 80s I miss great. <laughs> great music. Hey, um, did the people in that came in the 90s, though, did they talk about how great the 80s were? Yeah, they like did. Like the people in the 2000s mm -hmm. talked about how great the 90s That's were? That's right. Mm -hmm. They did. Interesting. 
Yeah. So people in the 20s, do they talk about how great? We don't talk about how great it was in 2000. In the, oh, in the 2010s. No. Now that, that was, was the heyday. That was the heyday. We usually go back to the 90s. We usually go back to the 90s. We still they go back to the 90s. We go back to the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the 80s too. Uh, no, EMI. Um, yeah. It was. Uh, I don't know. It was diff- I was thrown to. I was different than John. I, I I was thrown to the corporate world. Yeah. EMI is a big company, and I was with them and Sony. So I was. You know, this is my first time in a small setting, a family setting. I definitely like it. I definitely can tell the difference. I mean, there was some perks of being with corporate because you really had to move fast, and you had to. You you couldn't just say, "Hey, me, me, me." Right. Because there's so many writers. When I was over there, the last one I had, there was there was what, there was over a hundred writers. Yeah. And each of our song pluggers that handle us had 20 or 30 writers. So the only way to get attention is you had to have good songs. So it made you write up. Um, this here, it gave me the work ethic being at a corporate, you know, sure. company. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Um, sure. Just to strive to have the best song I can possibly have, lyrically or whatever, be different. And, mm-hmm. and uh, But coming to a smaller company like, like this is, like 50 mm-hmm. Egg, I can definitely see what John's saying. I wished I, because I, I didn't never had that experience, mm-hmm. but I I do experience it now, and mm-hmm. I can see the the, the tightness. Mm-hmm. Everybody's you're on the same team. Sure, you're all competing, but you're all on the same team. And yeah. I've never, we had that to an extent, but not like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you are a JV right now. Yes, so JV. you are between a major, a major in here. With, and so yeah. you kind of have the best of both. I do worlds. have the best of both worlds. I'm yeah. used. To, I'm not used to this world. I like this world. Love yeah. this world. Smaller. So I get For I sure. get a taste of it. My foot's yeah. in this world. And, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm so good, I guess, at functioning in corporate world. Yeah. You know, because that's all I've done. Yeah. Well, another thing that we always talked about that you did well, uh, mm-hmm. talk about you like you're not here for a minute, is you always did maintain those relationships because nobody was doing that for you. No one. Mm-hmm. So if they were, I remember over at Sony being in there in the Sony Fire Hall years and years and years ago. And whenever those people were in those rooms, if you were in there with an artist, you knew Shane was going to pop his head in that in that mm-hmm. day and tell you what he was doing and, and kind of make good with the artist and, and, and kind of do this thing. And that's a super valuable lesson oh, yeah. to learn. Right. That that Because you're kind of in that corporate world and, and in any other world, you're kind of on your own. It's up to you to get it those really things is. and make those relationships and have that artist pick up the phone and call you right. when, they, yeah. when they need that's a song. Right. But don't you think it's that way now? It is that way. Right, it's right. it's no, 100% yeah. so, that way. Right. I mean, that was another thing that we, we wanted everybody here at 50 Egg to learn from you yeah. is that's how you do that because right. you, you were always great yeah. at it. And everybody was like, nobody had anything bad to say about right. Shane Miner. Except for that, you. Except for me. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And talent. And yeah. talent. Yeah. And Universal. <laughs> yeah. And I'll, I'll talk about them <laughs> like they're not here too. And my wife. <laughs> I, yeah, your wife. Brooks. So. Oh um, I would say both of you are really good at making a room feel better. Than when an artist walks into it, I think so. John's you know, good at it too. like when you leave the room, you feel better for having been in the room with you guys. And I think y'all do that really well. And I think it's genuine. So I think that's it been really helpful in your well, career. Talk about advice for new songwriters. And we've been like artists. That. Yeah. Yeah. John well, and I. Yeah. Exactly my next point. So you both have been a label signed artist in in your past, mm-hmm. and you both made the transition and the decision to be a full time songwriter. Right. So how do you think? Or how did that transition go, first of all? And how do you think it's helped you in writing with artists and understanding where they're coming from? Because a lot of what you guys do is artist development 100%. as well these days. So how did that help you? And you know, I can answer that. Yeah, I mean, in a thousand ways. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I mean, I, for me, ha- having the deal was a great opportunity. You know, like John and I, we've toured the country. Heck, we've toured the world. We've been a different, different. We, I've been out, right. of, out, of the, out of the U.S. and I'm. Major tours, opening for Shania Twain, Alan from her to Alan Jackson to everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Um, having that label deal, what I can do, what makes it easy for me to answer this question, is I can show an, a young artist if they're willing, mm-hmm. or tell them what not to do. Because at the time, times were different. We didn't have streaming. We didn't. We didn't have outlets. We had a record label. Right. That's it. You went by exactly what they told you to do and mm-hmm. to, and to be. I could never be myself. Right. No, you know what I'm saying? Sure. I was told this works, and you don't argue with them because right. it's, it's the record label, right? Sure. They know. Yeah, didn't work for me. Thank God it didn't. Yeah. But I, the lesson that I learned was be true to yourself. You know yourself better than anyone, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, have a good team around you that's going to give you great advice. Pick, choose your team well. Right. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. and 
and it just it helps me relate to an artist now that's out there because John and I have toured everywhere. We know the grind. We know the schedule. We know up early at yeah. drive time, and you got you had two hours sleep, and you got to perform live on the radio. Mm -hmm. Understand all that. We know the politics, all the red tape, and the hoops you got to jump through. But you know, it got to where I didn't really want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I know how it feels for them, and we know. It's it, how important it is to be yourself out there because if you're yourself, they'll it's believable. The, the public's not stupid. 100%. They're mm -hmm. not stupid. They know. Yeah. And so, and you yeah. also know too to, that when you're writing that song with them in the room that day, that they're how many times they're going to go sing that song. That's right. Radio show. I know they're going to get sick of night, singing that song. The thing every that night. night. So how much? Hey man, let's make this about you. This is not about us. About us. Right. Man. And and you said the most I think when you said what not to do because we I know that I got it that I got it me. down. Dead, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, sitting in the room with I looked good in that green suit, though. You did. <laughs> Man, oh, on top huh? of that 18-wheeler. How about that? You should well, Google search. Green. What's the song? Should I sit, tell uh, Slave, to the, Slave to the Habit. Slave to the Habit. Slave to the Habit. Oh, my goodness. Shane's He's dancing on. in leather on top of us. <laughs> I have it on right now underneath these. <laughs> Do you still have that in your closet? Too? Yeah, but it doesn't oh, fit. Oh, God. Yeah. I gained 20, 30 yeah. pounds after that. Oh, man. I wish I had that green suit though. I would have wore that this morning. Look, we should get one made that's we, bigger now. Like a big, <laughs> that much bigger. A bigger giant. green suit. <laughs> like the jolly green giant all of a yeah. sudden. No. That's great. No. It's also worth Googling and searching too because he, he also looks like Frankie Ballard's dad in, in that. Oh, it could be video. Frankie yeah. Ballard's dad. Yeah. It could be. I never well, know. Sorry, Frankie. I'm just kidding. Sorry, Frankie. I love Frankie. So, Frankie and I joke about pick that. Pick one of your most commercially successful songs as a songwriter. And tell us about the process behind it, how it came to be. <sighs> That's hard. Beautiful mess. Yeah, Diamond yeah, Rio. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, did you say the process of it? Yeah, just, just any good story surrounding it that people would want to know about. I was writing with uh, Clay Mills and Sonny Lemaire. Sonny Lemaire was in exile. Did you ever write Sonny? No. The group Shane exile. had a string of hits with Sonny. I yeah. want to kiss you all. Remember that? Oh, I, I do. Remember. I do. Tell the yeah. night clothes. I <laughs> real high. I can't tell earlier. Who was it? Adam Sandler. Happy oh, Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, anyways, the guy that sings that part, that's huh. Sonny Lemare. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so we came in to write that morning. I didn't know. I, you know, I barely knew him. And uh, he said, "Man, I, I I heard somebody say something like si situation he was in was a beautiful mess." And I'm like, "Oh, I love that title." And we just started writing it. And and finding out a different way. And I remember when we first turned that song in, they're like, this is great, but this is never going to get played because it's so different. Did you ever have that with a song? Oh, yeah, every time. There you go. Yeah. Wow. What a great team, too, man. That's well, my, one of my favorites. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate sure. it. So to, how did y'all get to, uh, what's the verse about the salt? Uh, what's the line about salt? This morning put salt in my this coffee. This morning put salt put my in shoes my on coffee. The yeah, God, I think I said that, and Sonny went, put my shoes on the wrong feet. We're like, why not? I mean, that's what yeah. you do. You're that that's messed awesome. up. That's awesome. Behind yeah. my coffee cup, I just smile is my favorite one. One of my favorite lines. That's awesome. Yeah. Because I've been that guy. Yeah. So, no know. doubt. Yeah. Hey, and 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 just for a second too, I want I'm going to say about uh, we were talking about different kind of writers and stuff like that, and you're, you know, of course, like Shane's things that he, that he does well, but in a room also Shane will just it's just throwing. Mm -hmm. Like throwing and throwing and throwing out stuff, regardless of what's the dare to be dare to be stupid kind of thing. John, I'm pretty good at being about. stupid. <laughs> but if you're just throwing all the time, right, and letting everybody, you know, and, and if, stuff if they go, out if there. they go, oh mm -hmm. man, no, you don't even have to say no. That's not it. Mm -hmm. To somebody who's great at that, oh, yeah. they just they read you and then they move on. to Or the I'll next say thing. something and realize that just sucked. What I just said, right. <laughs> But, it might but I'm not. But it might be the line. I'm not might afraid to throw it because it's all <laughs> yeah. those years of songwriting. Absolutely. You know the different stuff works. Yes, that's a yeah. wonderful thing, especially for like guys like me who are, I'm worried about melody and I'm worried about uh, you know uh, the uh, guitar part and all that yeah. stuff like that. What you and do, you're great just at throwing it. and throwing and throwing. I love that's my favorite writer. Yeah. Somebody who's doing that. But you, but you throw stuff too. Yeah. I try to. Yeah. No, you do. You throw a lot. Thanks, of stuff. man. I avoided that. You're fun to write with, question. John. I know you did. Well, you know, do you, you want me to help you with that song question? Yeah, go ahead. Watching Airplanes was one That's of your one most of commercially favorites. successful songs, sure. and it was Thanks also your first cut. That was my first cut. That was my first hold. First hold, first cut, first single, first number one. Yeah. So that's so, a pretty cool story. That that day, and I don't do that one 
talk about that one that much because uh, it was so long ago. But that was 2007, I think, something like that. Yeah. But Jim Beavers came in with a, a piece of paper, and he said he had on there, uh, sitting out here on the hood of this truck, looking up at a caramel-colored sunset sky. And I remember thinking, man, caramel-colored sunset sky, how cool is that? Yeah. Like, Because we always say it the same way. We do mm -hmm. it in country right. songs. Right. It's the same kind of sunset, sure. same truck, same everything. Right? Right. And uh, I was like, how cool is that? And it would be kind of different. Um, and then he said he didn't have, I think he had written on there watching airplanes down there. And he said, uh, you know how you go out and you, and you watch airplanes. Where, where we grew up, there wasn't no, uh, no. There wasn't no airport. airport. And I was like, no, I, but I know what you're talking about. And he was like, yeah, exactly. We're going to write that. And then another cool part of that um, thing, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I sing like a girl. Uh, <laughs> and so when he left the room, I was trying to change the key of the song. So I was playing the chorus in a different chord progression than he was <coughs> than playing. He was, so, the, yeah, and what Jim used to do a lot of times, because I think it was now in hindsight, because I was so young, he didn't want to watch my process because it was probably like excruciating for him. <laughs> <laughs> so he would kind of leave the room. He'd go, okay, here's this. Here's kind of the parameters of where we are. And Jim was kind of showing me everything country music songwriting, like how you do it, because right. I had no idea. Right. And so he would kind of leave the room, and he came back, and I was in a different key. And he was like, oh, cool, like a key change for the chorus. And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so that's the big part of that song is that the chorus is a complete yeah, key change. So we kept the verse where it was, right. and the chorus changed the same, and we took some time and, and tried to, try to figure out how to do that. But we had pages written. Sorry, I spit. Now, and I'm excited about talking about the song. I wasn't before. <laughs> um, oh, I love this stuff. But we had pages of what the truck looked like because it was like, if we're going to write this song, let's write it to the to the wall. You know, mm -hmm. here's the truck and here's what kind of truck it was. And so at the end of that process, we were just pulling stuff out. Well, we don't need this, and we don't. So we're kind of editing ourselves of what we needed. We ended up with the. And I thought it made the song cooler, but in my head when I hear that song, I know more than what everybody mm -hmm. else knows about what the guy looked like and where she was from and where he was from and what he did for a living and what she did and why she was leaving and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the, in, the, in the three minute story, you know, we didn't need all of that information. Right. And uh, anyway, I, I'm, I was always proud of that That's, song. I'm I very proud of that. Thanks, you man. for that song. Thanks, that song's man. a great song. I feel like I have more insight into your songwriting now that you just told that story because I think both of you are really good at painting pictures. And I think sometimes, you know, there's there's surface it. level hits out there, but I know both of you, like cold as you, there's imagery in there that is not in every song. And it's because y'all paint pictures in your brain. And now listening to how the creative process worked for both of those songs, yeah, I see that a little bit more now. Well, it's also well, nice too when two songwriters and me and, and you and you always do it and you're trying to impress the other songwriter. Oh, yeah. So there's never like a day that's burnt ever because you even if you feel like do you not do that? Yeah, I, do, I it. do it. It's like yeah. I want you to love my line when that I, I came up with. Yeah, and but I, John, I normally do. I know, and you we're know all that. doing that. All but, we're all. <laughs> <laughs> we're but all you know, but sometimes him and I'll say something in a room and we'll both look at each other whether I said it or he said it, uh -huh. and we know it. It sucked. Sure. No, it sucked. But you and I can look at each other and go, dude, for this song? For the <laughs> you, you, want you, that should, you should write that in your song tomorrow. And then if I, if John shoots down a line of mine, I'll go, what about my dreams? When I write this. <laughs> right. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah. And if you got two guys or three guys or whatever it is, everybody should agree on that. Most of the Absolutely. time it's like, oh, that's what it is for sure. That's right. And I, I've noticed too that, that after doing it for so long and also uh, um, Barry Dean, uh, uh, pointed out one time you can write all these beautiful pictures of things and then you can spend two hours on the line that just says that you end up saying and i love you like the, the <laughs> most right. simple the most simple line that's ever. right it's almost always simple you know simply and, genius right right no. yes what is that uh, Lionel Richie and he said yeah. what he finally goes well I just called to say I love you and that oh there, there it is, is. There, yeah you there got it right. you got it but we spend so much time on those lines because we want to get the what everything looks like but then when you get to the point of telling him or her or, what, or whoever it's like uh it becomes becomes harder all of sure. a sudden that's right you're like how about i love you and i was like oh yeah no for sure why didn't we say that you know two hours ago <laughs> <coughs> that's so, right sometimes great. less is more right absolutely yeah it yeah. is it really edit is. it down 
because I, I think I, I learned a lot from from actually both of you on this is like go to a concert. These people aren't analyzing the lyrics. No way. Like we are. We are. <laughs> no way. And it's uh, you're writing for them. You know, you, it, sometimes you can't write for yourself. You I fall write into for, that trap oh, as yeah. a writer. Oh yeah. And I still love to learn. I don't know it all. Oh, I yeah. still learn every day. Well, for sure. And I think that's what's cool about both of your jobs is you know people talk about what's real country music and what's not. It's all country music. There's there's pop country. There's you know, sure. traditional country, but each day y'all switch it up and write something different. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of mm -hmm. cool that you don't know what actor you are that day. Right. You know, right. in the scene. Does that mean we're schizophrenic? Probably you so. are definitely schizophrenic. I'm not schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> it's helpful, right? Hey, Shane, he's a, that guy's a nice couple people, right? He is. He's a good couple <laughs> nice people. He's a nice dude, couple we're guys. We're so saying that from now on. <laughs> Shane Miner, that's, that's some nice dudes right there. Like, he's really good dudes. <laughs> Where do you draw your inspiration for writing from everywhere right everywhere Just... life living yeah love family the wins the losses right yeah yeah, yeah. all that stuff all of it i do a lot to, i do a lot of neighbors out in ashton city they don't know that but like i keep i'll, I'll go around and talk to everybody and just wait on them to say something or or what I think they would like. Yeah. Uh, I use a lot of uh, like fake characters that are that I in my head are listening to the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about I me. Mean, we got names for a bunch of them. Ricky and Rita. You know, they're yep. the ones that turn on the radio in the morning. <laughs> uh, I'm they turn on the radio in the morning and don't turn it off until something they play hates. They hate on yeah. the radio in right. the name. Right. right. Turn it right. off real quick. My dad does that too. I think about mm -hmm. them. The That's guys cool. that are. That's cool. Driving every day, working, mm -hmm. and they got it on as, as part of the, their daily process. Right. Right. Uh, I think about them a bunch and try to get those ideas from from uh, yeah. from those things. Yeah. Well, I like that you brought that up, too, because I think the pressure is on for you guys to write something that catches people's attention within the first 15 seconds, right? Sure. Because you're worried about them turning the radio. That's and that's right. what labels are worried about and radio that's stations right. and PDs. That's and right. It starts with you guys worrying about it first, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And we were talking about great lines earlier, too. Like, And we've called, I, all of us have, the songwriters, have called a lot of great lines because you have to think about it for a second. Right. And not that you don't want to think on a song, because mm -hmm. you do. You know, uh, I'm still not sure what happened on Three Wooden Crosses, but uh, uh, was, it the pre was it the preacher or the... Anyway. I can't <laughs> Great song. Great song. Didn't even matter, did it? But you have to, if you have to think about those things, it's that time in the concert where it's like, man, you want to you wanna get a beer? That yeah. kind of thing? Yep. And you don't want that. I mean, I want it in some songs. Sure. And if you're sure. writing that kind of song, it's great. It's but if you're writing a feel-good country song, we don't need, I mean, you pick right. your spots where you're being creative in those things. And, uh, and, and you're just talking to them. That's right. In, in, That's, in right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We spend a lot of time thinking about that. I do. I do too. Yeah. I don't want to overthink it. Yeah. Uh, what about, okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot now that we're talking about this. What's your favorite opening line of a song? Oh, man. Or one of them. I've got like two or three in my head. Of our songs? Well, I mean, I know y'all songs, but like outside of y'all songs. Oh, oh gosh. Any song. Any song. Oh, wow. Jeez. Right. Um, God, that's that's a tough one because I got not that tough. I got so many songs that I love. It's well, he like, mentioned one like sitting out here on the hood of this truck, looking up. Okay, I'm in. I want to know why he's sitting on the hood of the truck. You know what I mean? Man, Otis Redding's got he, a song. It, yours there. this morning. I put salt in my coffee. That's a great. Yeah, that's but not the first line. Just, I don't know the first line. But I mean, yeah. but I'm just saying like lines that are just memorable. You know, I think of um, holding her and loving you is the third Absolutely. hardest thing I'll ever do. It's yeah, like, yeah, wait, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otis Redding's got a song, I forget which one, and he the said, first. if I was a clown, yep. way up there, yep. I'd go with you most everywhere, so if I was a song way up there, I'd yep. always love that one. Yep. I thought that was neat. I liked Haggard, first time we met. Oh, yeah. His favorite memory of mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, I love that. Yeah. yeah, and if you're Just, talking about first lines of songs, like, how important is that? It's, it's so, so crazy important. important. It's so insanely important that that first line is like, yeah, for sure. No, Interesting. Man. Like, I like this guy already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, especially in the streaming two days now, too. Yeah. make it worth living. Yeah. yeah. You, you start thinking of these. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Well, you think today's digital scape, it's the, the, there's playlisting now as opposed to radio where you'd have a commercial in between where their palate would get cleansed. But now you listen to these playlists and they go straight through. Yeah. And if you don't capture their attention, they're going to go straight to the next one. Yeah. You know, I think about that all the time when I'm listening. Is, is, is there anything that stood out as a little bit different and didn't sound all the same? You know right. what I mean? 
And those yeah. opening lines are really important with that. Right. Absolutely. Something's, something now, especially these days, has to be in there to make you. Absolutely. If it's melody, if it's a head lick or whatever right. it is, something, something's got to be there. Man, I love it when it's lyric. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah. Me too. too. Like, I love Brooks and Dunn lipstick letter across the mirror. Or, oh, yeah. Yeah. Across yes, the mirror, morning. morning. <laughs> gotta love exactly. Ronnie. Exactly. I think that's what people <laughs> forget about. You know, it, it starts with you guys. The worrying process on a song starts but with then you, you guys. You can't overthink it. It's funny how some of those yeah. lines just kind of just fall out, right? Sure. We sit there. I do. Mm-hmm. I sit there and overthink it too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Overthinking this. Uh, yeah. Are we overthinking this? Especially we writing cold as you. How many, time, how many times did we say that that day? We hey were, man, we're overthinking this thing. And we were overthinking it. Sure. Because yeah. you don't want to. You want it to be great. You want it to be great. But it yep. already is great. And it's simple. It's it is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, we've talked about lyric. And we've talked about process. You both are very, you, you're versatile. Melodies, lyrics, and everything. What's your process? Do you, do you come in? With, I know y'all get asked this all the time. But do you, do you come in? With, it's different every time, Usually right? an idea. It's different, it's different every, every time. time. Sometimes it's a, title, a guitar lick. It could be a guitar it's, lick. It could mm-hmm. be. But I think mostly, most of the guys we do, it's, well, what do we got? You know, so you're going mm-hmm. through your phone. Right. You're going lyric idea, like a hook. Right. It's usually depends on what we're aiming at too, what sure. right. or whatever, whatever. Right. Sure. And sometimes it happens in tandem where, hey, here's this thing. Sure. Does anybody have anything? Have a hook that goes with this? Mm-hmm. Um, and if somebody's got something just killing them, you know, they, yeah, they throw it out pretty much immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you got a list of what do you keep your list of song ideas on? My phone. On your on notes. On Is that notes, what you do? Yeah. I got Evernote. I mm-hmm. keep mine on, and uh, I can scroll back to. 2010, sure. I think, on, right. that, on that That's Evernote right. thing. And man, they get worse and worse as they go down. You ever have them ones you wake up in the middle of the night, like, yeah. like two o'clock in the morning, and you're laying there and you're like, oh, you're like, oh that's great brilliant. idea. And you're reaching that's through brilliant. your phone. <laughs> and you type, and then you look at it the next it's day. The you're worst, like, always the worst. What the heck is that? I've done one, one time where I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But the rest of time, man, you're like, oh, I got to get up. And you type it down, and you're like, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm right. And then you this, look at it, and you're like, what a turd. What does that even mean? I don't even know what that means. It's true. Oh, man. Well, (laughs) you know, and to your point, like, there's a question where they were saying, you know, how do you know something's a hit song? You really don't. You don't. I hope you don't. If you think you know what a hit song is, you're in big, big trouble. Big trouble. trouble. Because you're going to start calling things from, and you watch writers change Mm -hmm. that get, that get, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Did that interrupt you? No, I was was just looking at you. You watch things that, Writers that uh, they get success and then they start to know what the what's happening mm-hmm. and then they're you're in big trouble because you you won't allow for that new thing to happen because mm-hmm. we're always trying to write about two years ahead. It's a know? moving yeah. target. Yeah, you know, where everything's happening. If you're writing for what's happening you're on the radio trends, right you're now, behind. you're in big right. trouble. So you're trying to write ahead. So what's the new thing? And 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 uh, there's a, a big group of guys in town and and you know everybody knows their names who are usually ahead of that and know what they are. And those guys, when you talk to them or write with them, they never call a weird idea or something mm-hmm. strange. They they you know, at least entertain the thought mm-hmm. of like, sure. well, yeah, maybe that'll maybe that'll work. But try to get where the other writer is, or follow a writer that will follow you wherever mm-hmm. you're going, especially for the new guys that we're writing with. Sure, because they don't know they haven't been in the same process right. we've no. been in, where they've no. been writing songs for 15 right. years. That's you know? right. And I think for, for both of you, the craft of the song is really important. And feeling fulfilled every day writing songs is important too. So if you're just chasing whatever that hit song is every day, it's not fulfilling you as a creative either, right? No. Yeah. And so uh, I think, you know, especially here, we we don't do the, you know, do a hit up tempo only. We right. can't do that, you know. Yeah. If a ballad falls out that day, then it might be the best ballad that's been written. The best lately. way to get a ballad is to say write a up tempo. Up tempo hit. Yeah. Boy, exactly. That's, that's when you're going to get the best ballads. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. But that's what they've said in town it's over true. and over sure. again. Hit up tempo, hit up tempo, sure. but the thing about it is is, you know, we're real quick to say write the best song. Just write whatever your best song is that That's day. Smart. We'll find a home smart. for it. That's you know, and, and there's targets outside of that too, definitely. where this artist is looking for an sure. up tempo. That's right. a different thing than sure. than just a broad, just the broad positive. Yes, up tempo negatives are kind of my favorite thing yeah. anyway. Well, you're good up-tempo at swapping negative. the sentiment, you know, like right. in red light. The thing feels great, oh, yeah. but it's awful. Like it's the guy's world's crush. crashing down, but it's a pretty day. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful day. I love <laughs> that. I love that's that too. One of my favorites. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful mess. 
Yeah. See? He's mad at you for writing Beautiful Mess, by the way. I'm mad at him for, for writing uh, Diamond Rings and Gold Bar Stools without me. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Love that. I understand that. I understand that. I wish you'd sing it for me. <laughs> I was about to say, you know, that's a good... Yeah. yeah, that's a good. Uh, what are you? Do, do you want to go to? Yeah, we'll come back for performance. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, we're gonna take a quick little commercial break and come back, and these guys are gonna sing a couple of songs. You might have heard them talk about one of them. So. Hey guys, we're back, and we are gonna hear a couple of acoustic performances from Jonathan Singleton and Shane Miner. All right, I'm going. I'm going to do uh, Diamond Rings and Old Bar Stools with it. Mr. Jim McGraw cut this. Uh, Tim McGraw, I'm sorry. Tim, Tim McGraw. Diamond Rings and Old Bar Stools Wants for queens and wants for fools. Wants a future and wants a past. Wants forever and one won't last. It ain't like midnight cigarette smoke. Nothing like water down whiskey. Coke. Yeah, I guess some things just don't mix like you hope, like me and you, like diamond rings and old bar stools. Wrongs and rights, the highs and lows. The I love you's the I told you so's. Last few miles to wherever's home. Another morning waking up alone. It ain't like midnight and cigarette smoke. Nothing like watered down whiskey and coke. Yeah, I guess some things just don't mix like you hope. Like me and you. And diamond rings and old bar stones. Going out of my mind these days Like I'm walking around in a haze Yeah, Johnny I can't think straight I can't concentrate And I need a shade Go to work and I look tired Boss man says, son, you're gonna get fired Boy, this ain't your style and behind my coffee cup, I just smile. What a beautiful mess, what a beautiful mess I'm in. Spending all my time with you, there's 
nothing else I'd rather do What a sweet addiction that I'm caught up in Cause I can't get enough Can't stop the hunger for your love What a beautiful, what a beautiful mess I'm in This morning put salt in my coffee I put my shoes on the wrong feet This in my mind I swear Why do I laugh here? The day the death of me I don't care What a beautiful mess What a beautiful mess I'm in Spending all my time with you There's nothing else I'd rather I can't get enough, can't stop the hunger for your love. What a beautiful, what a beautiful mess. Mm -hmm. What? Hey, I need more, right? You want me to break my head? Is it your eyes? I'm gonna kill you, Johnny. Is it your smile? All I know is that you're driving me wild What a beautiful mess, what a beautiful mess I'm in Spending all my time with you There's nothing else I'd rather do What a sweet addiction that I'm caught up in Cause I can't get enough Can't stop the hunger for your love Hey guys, we're back and we're going to take a couple of questions from the audience. What's up? Um, so we have a lot of people are talking in the chat saying that performance was amazing. Jason uh, Ban Nikki said, I remember this day of Jonathan touring with Eric in the Young and Wild bar tour days. That's when I became a huge fan. So, oh, that's awesome. Um, and then a Music Fiend awesome. has a question saying, how did y'all find your genre? I grew up in country music. Yeah. I grew up listening to, I, I grew up listening to everything. Yeah. But coming from a rodeo family in a rodeo world, I was just a dad that just constantly, you know, he'd be there in the morning with black coffee brewing and a cigarette lit with, with you get with the country music coming over the radio, just seeping through the house. So that's what I cut my teeth on, but I loved all, all kinds of music, mm -hmm. you know. I don't think we thought, I say we, I mean, my band or guys we grew up with, uh, I don't think we thought we were country at all. Really? I think we thought we were real cool. Uh, but, you know, country music was just there. Like I was talking about before, it's the osmosis of country music. Sure. Almost. If you go in, you went in Piggly Wiggly and they're playing, you know, everybody. And then you go in a gas station to play it and then it's uh, played at the school and then they have this, this kind of song. But, I mean, I was in punk bands. Uh, we were in... Uh, you know, rock bands, what we thought were rock bands, the bars we started playing as we got older, you kind of split about half and half. It would be like uh, about half country and half southern rock, uh, rock stuff, uh, R&B, blues kind of stuff. But I didn't sing the country parts on mm -hmm. those things. We had two singers and this Josh Smith that was in the Grove would sing all the country stuff and then I would do like a you know Al Green song or something. That's kind Love of what I, kind of what I was doing, and uh, and we just we did everything from Bob Marley to to Merle Haggard. I mean, we did everything. It's great, but kind of where we were and what was going on and the opportunities that arose for me were all in country music. I mean, we did a couple. We did a showcase years ago in my brother's band where I played drums in as a as a kind of blues kind of band. And, That's right. Uh, Blues Traveler really messed that up for us. Uh, <laughs> my brother plays harmonica and sings real great and writes songs kind of in that same kind of vein at that time he did. And 
anyway, it kind of picked me. I didn't really, it was, that was what I made money doing. We didn't make, we right. sure didn't make any money playing punk music. You right. know what I mean? Right. Uh, Lucy's record shop here in Nashville shut down, so we couldn't play there anymore. <laughs> uh, and uh, so it kind of picked me, but I knew a lot about country music. I knew right. all those old songs, you know, I was a fan of them. Still. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I was born by the river. Okay. Um, the last question we'll get at it is, what does 58 look for in a writer versus other publishers? How has that changed in the last or five, 10 years, and what do you wish new writers did better? Yeah. That's a good, that's well, a good I, question, Tal. No, no, I don't think it's more of a me question. I think I all it's three you. of us really work hard at this, and it's our job to kind of determine, like, do an A&R scout of the town and what's new, and so I'd like to hear from your songwriter perspective. I mean, I think the things that we, we, we definitely try to find things that aren't stepping on the other people that we have here. Yep. Uh, we definitely do that. Um, something different. It, it's always something different. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody who has a, an odd talent. Odd is the wrong word. Different unique. Is, unique is a good word. Different is a good word. Yeah. Um, we always, for some reason, here. And I know why. It's because me and you and Luke and everybody else here is a big fan of big singers. Like, we love big singers. Love right. Uh, it's always been a big talent to be able to do what, kind of what we just did and, and perform a song. Right. Uh, it's another tool in your tool belt that you can, you can mm -hmm. play it and, and make people like it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, I think that's, a, that's been a big deal here. Mm -hmm. uh, what else you got? I just, I mean, I, you nailed it. I think... I love working with younger writers because I was that kid that came to town sure. looking for help and really it was kind of, I didn't really have a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I think you guys are great about that at 58. And I think and it's I looking for, well, especially in the artist front, it's, it's looking for those that have an identity. Have an identity. They don't go in the room and go, hey guys, what am I who today? am I? Yeah. Which, is what, which is when I got my record deal, that was me. Right. Yeah. That was we me. Spend so so much don't, time. if you're an artist, you know who you are 100%. Yes. Even as a writer. Are. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. As a writer, too, is, yeah, a, is a great point, too. Yeah, yeah, we spend so much time going, we would love to help you right. once you give us marching orders. Sure. It's always a weird dynamic of, like, is the writer writing for the publishing company or is the publishing company working for the writer? And I think it's both ways. It depends on how you look at right. it. You know what I, I mean? I feel like we feel like we work for them. We are writer. working for them 100%, and that's how it should be. But, I don't, but yeah. if, they're not, if they're not doing what they're supposed yeah. to be doing, then you have to... Then sure. they're working for you well, now. I mean, you know there, what I mean? It's like you can't give them marching There's times orders. when it's like, Jonathan's like, man, I, and Shane too, it's like, I can't be the only one cranking out songs and working at this every every week, right? But then again, some, some new talent comes to town and they go, well, how do y'all have so much success? It's like, because we work at it every work. single day. We try to you know? outwork everybody. I, outwork everybody. Yeah, I you think and I that's, have never stopped. Mm -hmm. Never. We've been writing songs for... For sure. 15, 16, yeah. maybe 15, 16 years. Longer than that, you've been right. For sure. Is it? For sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah well, that's our Obviously, that's John's kind of a our, great songwriter, terrible at math. That's but, kind of our <laughs> mantra is right. outwork everybody. Outwork everybody. We do, yeah, and sure. we still do. And sure. we still try to better ourselves. Absolutely. Sure. You've never reached the top of your game. But and then on one last note, you know, one of the, the, the most prestigious, and in and, and the eyes of a songwriter, I feel like, awards in this town... <laughs> is voted on by other songwriters, and it's like the 10 songs I wish I'd written, right? It's yeah. a pretty cool award to get because you know that other songwriters said, man, I wish cool. I wrote that, right? We hang yeah. those on the wall. For Absolutely. Sure. So yeah. if you each had to name one song in, of all time that you wish you had written, what would it be? A uh, country song? Any, any genre. I don't care. I thought we were talking about the songwriters, all the national, national thing with the... We are, I'm saying, but that's an award that you guys like to... To win. God, that's a right? tough question. There's so many freaking songs. It's just name. Just country name country song. Good just old boys. Name. Good old boys like me. Oh, for sure. Don Williams. Yeah. Bob McDill wrote that. Absolutely. Amazing writer. That's a great song. Dixieland Delight. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. yeah. I'll take those that are in my <clears throat> top of the <clears throat> playlist of like, I'm not having a great day when I wake up yet. And I do, uh, Lord, I hope this day is good. Great. I do, uh, uh, it's a great day to be alive. Great. I do, uh, I do any pick the band anything Levi right. Helm ever sang. I wish I'd written any of those. Heck yeah, uh, Van Morrison, any any of those. Yes, um, uh, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Atlantic City is one of my favorite things. That's mm -hmm. on top of my list, and also Redneck Girls. Yeah, give Love me a, give me a Bellamy Brothers. Come on, kill man. to write that song. Yes, I'd have messed that day up though. 
I would have messed that song <laughs> I mean, up. I would have totally that just messed hit that me song when up. You just said it. I'm like, here he goes. I would have been like, are we, we sure about? Thought. Are we sure about redneck girls? I don't know. Maybe it could be something else. <laughs> I, I would have messed that, that day up. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Well, you got a question? Well, if you had one last bit of parting advice on this live stream, because this is your last question. Um, I had a thing. I don't know if it's advice, but I had a thing that occurred to me on the way in this morning. We were talking about doing this, and and I remember clearly being an artist. Uh, and you're kind of, I kind of chased that thing. I didn't chase it down. It kind of chased me down, but I had an opportunity there. And I'm, uh, I was a guy from Lexington, Tennessee, who had never had much opportunity for, of anything. And here's Dan Huff wants to do my record and Universal South wants to sign me and they want to give me a publishing deal and I'm going to write songs for a living. And, and so I took that and I did it, even though I didn't really, uh, artists, we'd been playing for 10 or 15 years as a band before that. None of us wanted to go on the road. And but I remember specifically, and I'm getting to a point. Uh, American Songwriter magazine came out, and I had a song on a CD in the thing, in the sleeve of the thing. And of all the things we had done as an artist, I thought, how cool is it that I just got a song on the American Songwriter thing? Because right. and it's kind of, the, and I think the point is, is you follow the things, you got to follow all the roads, right? But when you find the one that you that you, that that right. means something to you, and you go, oh man, that's really cool to me. I thought that was the neatest thing, and I was like, man, because we're not talking about country songwriters, we're talking about songwriters, songwriters. you know, and on, a, on a bigger scale, and uh, I thought that was the neatest thing to me, so I think maybe the, I don't know what the advice is in there, it feels like a, it's, it's, in, a, it's in a song somewhere, you just figure it out for yourself. Which right? was great. But follow the thing that you love doing, yeah. and I love writing songs, I love what we're fixing to do, I can't wait. I'm excited about this being over so we can go write a song. And I do that every day. You and I are writing today, aren't you? Yeah, with, with Josh Phillips, yeah. Where's Josh? He He's lost his there. record deal, so we're not. Listen to him. Where's Josh? <laughs> Listen, He's going to laugh all the way to the bank because he's got a lot of singles yeah, yeah. coming out. Can we mess with him for two seconds? You, well, I think give some parting advice before you <laughs> knock on Josh Phillips. Okay, parting advice. Be yourself. Never let anyone tell you who you are. Surround yourself with a great team. I mean, unless you suck. Unless you really, if you suck, you <laughs> suck. Okay, there's nothing we can do about that. Nothing you can do about Nashville that. Nashville can't fix that. Be aware I'd if be you aware suck. that you suck. Start be with that. Be aware that you it's suck. It's okay. We all suck at something. So, but it's all right. I'm kidding. No, seriously, be true to yourself. Um, tenacity. Work hard. Yeah. If you got the goods, it'll, it'll come out. It, it will. And with a good team, you know. Surround yourself with a good team and be willing to take constructive criticism. I think that's hard for all of us at times, yeah. but... And you know, the thing too of not not taking yourself too seriously. Yeah. Exactly. In those in those situations. That's right. Uh, For sure. That's right. Like the Luke Bryan song that we wrote that he never cut. He never Remember cut. That song? He never cut that, did he? No, man, you can't get easy. Maybe he's watching, Luke. <laughs> you know how hard we worked that day. We worked hard, didn't we? We did. We did. I don't know what he did that day. I don't know what he was doing. I yeah. love him though. Funny. Yeah. Funny no, guy. He's fun. Guy. He's fun. But Speaking don't take of... yourself too seriously. Yeah, Meaning, yeah. if you do take yourself too seriously, uh, in and right. being serious for a second, uh, then it, it breaks your heart over and over and over again. Right. And you right. just need those couple of little heartbreaks, and then and then it kind of scabs over a little bit, and you don't. It, you know, it doesn't bother That's you that right. bad anymore. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna get you're gonna get heartbroken. Hundred mm percent. -hmm. I think we all still do to some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It never stops. So, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Keep going. Well, this has been a fun day. Fun day. Absolutely, yes. I'm yes. stuck with John. Where's Josh? <laughs> Josh is in there. Hey, Josh, come here. He's hiding in there. <laughs> come here, Josh. Yeah, well, <laughs> thank you for joining us with American Songwriter <laughs> on Twitch, and we'll see you guys Josh, you big wimp. <laughs> <laughs>